standard components, castle nuts. Let's look at how an assembly will look like when the fastening mechanism that we are using is a castle nut. This is the final drawing that we'll see, but before we get there, let's look at each of these three individual parts that make up a castle nut. First, we typically have a bolt or a shaft-like component, and how we characterize when we need to use a castle nut is we see that there's a small hole right in the end. So if you see a shaft or a bolt that has a small hole at the end, that's typically an indication that on this end we'll use a castle nut to fix components together. So that's the one part that we need. The second part is the actual castle nut, and you can see it has these grooves in, and the third part is a split pin. So how this works, when I'm assembling something, I'll add some components on the inside, and to fasten everything together, I will add the castle nut on the one end. And now that small hole is going to line up with these grooves that I have. So I tighten it all the way until I can see that the grooves and the small hole is lining up. Now at this stage I can still move this castle nut around, right? But this is what the split pin is for. So what I do is I push the split pin through that hole, out the other side, and now when I look at it from the top, this is how it looks. The split pin can still move in and out, so I'll have to bend these legs open to be able to make sure it doesn't move. But at this stage, I can't turn this nut anymore. So this is a fixed component. Nothing can move on either side, not in this direction, not in the rotational direction. Okay, now let's look again at the drawing that we have. All the same rules count as for normal nuts and bolts in terms of how to draw it. But here you can see when you look at the castle nut from the top, that's why you see this shape that you see. You see this little eye from the split pin is going through a groove through the pin and you're opening up the legs to make sure that it's fixed. So here I'm not opening the legs because I don't want to break this apart again. And on the drawing, that's how you'll have it. If you look at it from this side, very important here, can you see that this split pin head is slightly wider than this groove? So common mistakes that students make here is that they make this split pin head smaller than that groove. If that was the case, I would have been able to push this right through. So it's important when you're drawing the split pin that it's slightly wider than this, this groove. See, like they have it here. Just to give you an indication of how this will be drawn incorrectly, is often you have, if you have this part of the castle nut, and there's the groove there. Sometimes I just draw a split pin in like that. And now the split pin is the same size as the groove, which is incorrect. You need to make sure that the sides are actually sticking out outside of that groove. 